Right now on News 4 at 6, Building for Billy, the new Amherst Park dedicated to a fallen Western New York hero. And what a spectacular day out there. Lots of sunshine. It is warming up for sure. And don't worry, we have a lot more of this warm weather to talk about coming up in your 401 forecast. And thousands of people are devastated tonight after a dance recital gets canceled last minute. We'll tell you why New York State Parks canceled it coming up. Live in high definition, this is Western New York's news leader. Now, News 4 at 6. We begin at 6 with a beautiful look over Niagara Falls. Just a gorgeous shot there. A lot of sunshine as we look over the water right now. Summer is right around the corner and it definitely feels like it today. Good evening, everyone. It has been a great day to spend down by the water or at one of the many events happening in Western New York. And we hope this will last through the weekend. Forewarn meteorologist Andrew Bagliti is here. What do you think? Uh, we're going to get a repeat performance tomorrow for sure, Callan. Temperatures even bumping up a little bit higher. And we will have that breeze again, a little gusty out there. So there's a lot of positives, but there are a few things we got to watch out for. Of course, on days like this, a lot going on. Very, very busy uh, across Western New York. Just be be careful. That's my number one concern. There's a look at temperatures outside right now, though. It is a very warm afternoon. 75 in Buffalo were kept back a little bit because of that lake breeze, but a lot of surrounding areas getting back into the low 80s today. Some mid and upper 70s down around the southern tier with a whole lot of sunshine. There's a look at that breeze right now out of the southwest coming right off of the lake. So downtown towards Canal Side, that's where the more comfortable areas are right now. Once you get away from that breeze, though, things feeling quite toasty. Now it's been a largely sunny day. We're getting a few clouds moving in right now around Niagara Falls, but no rain associated with this, and these should clear out later on tonight. We did see a few puffy clouds flare up down around the Pennsylvania line with maybe an isolated sprinkle, but we are looking dry for tonight with mainly clear skies and temperatures stay mild in the 60s, so certainly a night to sleep with the air conditioners on for tomorrow. Sunny and hot once again. We'll actually see the humidity creeping up a little bit, and we are going to see a gusty breeze, especially by the lakes. Keep that in mind if you plan on being out on the water. It is going to be pretty choppy out there, especially on Lake Erie with a small craft advisory active for tomorrow, so be careful, but a gorgeous day. Don't forget the the sunscreen coming up in your full forecast to let you know how long this warmth is sticking around. All right, thank you, Andrew. Well, three people were injured, one seriously in a jet seat ski crash in the city of Tonwanda. It happened on Ellicott Creek just past noon today. Police sent us these pictures. They tell us a man was standing on the dock near his jet ski behind the restaurant Smoke on the Water. Then another jet ski crashed into the dock. Police say a man and a woman were on that jet ski. The man was getting rope to tie it off when the woman on board accidentally hit the throttle, crashing it into that docked jet we talked about the man has a head injury. Police say no charges will be filed. Well, the town of Tonawanda Dance Studio got disappointing news this morning. They were scheduled to have their annual dance recital at Art Park. It was canceled. Now the studio tells us it found out through this note when they arrived. They say Art Park did not properly notify them of the change. But tonight the park is responding. News 4's Rachel Monjovi is live at Art Park with all of the details. Rachel. Yeah, Callan, this is the sign that the Lorraine Goddard Dance Studio found when they got here this morning. The sign says because of technical issues, the recital had to be canceled, and that decision was left up to New York State Parks. Now, those technical issues that they're talking about are related to fire alarm failure within the building. Carla Goddard Feather is the director of the dance studio. She says they've been holding their annual recital for over 65 years, and for the past 15 years, the recital has been at our Park. There were two shows scheduled today, one at 11 this morning and one at 430. More than 2,000 people were expected to attend the recitals to see about 400 performers from ages 2 to 25 years old. Goddard says she didn't receive any phone calls from Art Park this morning, and it wasn't until she showed up and saw the signs posted that the recital was canceled. She said it was poor communication on Art Park's behalf. Her and her staff have been out here all day telling parents and guests as they arrived. They've also been calling their clients all day as well. She says everyone, including the dancers and parents, are devastated. 
so there were some initial reactions where people were frustrated when they got here. Um, and obviously, it, it's time and effort getting your child into the costume, doing their hair, doing their makeup, driving, you know, here. And, and expectations are high. The kids are excited. So it was disappointing. But I would say 99.9% .9 of the people, as we were bawling, were phenomenal. <laughs> I mean, and they were phenomenal and supportive and just, you know, were offering up suggestions and offered up help. Our park sent us a statement tonight. They said the technical issues were beyond their control and attempts made by the New York State Parks to correct the situation failed. They said they notified the dance studio by email just after 8 this morning, but Goddard said she never saw the email. The dance studio is working with Art Park to reschedule the dance, dance recital. They're hoping they can get it rescheduled for next weekend, but they are aware that not everyone who bought a ticket will be able to show up. We will let you know when and if a resolution is made. For now, reporting live in Art Park tonight, Rachel Monjovi, News 4 at 6. Thank you, Rachel. Well, across the state, anti Sharia law protesters marching in Manhattan faced counter protesters this afternoon. The two sides squaring off there. The groups clashed verbally, and police had to step in. There are demonstrations happening across the country. Demonstrators for the march against Sharia spoke out about the threat of Islamic extremism. But those who oppose the march believe the demonstrators are creating more racism. Um, other neo fascist groups that they're aligned with um, are, are part of this completely right wing vi um, violence, again, that's targeting Muslims. We want to support this to save the Constitution, to prevent ever uh, Sharia law being implemented, because Sharia law is directly op opposed to the United States Constitution. Today's demonstration was one of the largest protests of Islamic law. In Washington, President Donald Trump has left for the weekend following a whirlwind week. The president spoke out yesterday about former FBI Director James Comey's testimony before the Intelligence Committee. Brooke Silverbraga has the latest. President Trump landed in New Jersey Friday evening for a weekend at his golf club after insisting in a White House press conference that former FBI Director James Comey's Senate testimony was wrong. Comey had claimed the president encouraged him to drop the investigation into former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. I didn't say that. So he lied about that. Well, I didn't say that. The president also said he did not ask Comey for loyalty. Would you be willing to speak under oath to uh, give your version of 100 percent? But the president didn't give a clear answer to whether tapes of those conversations exist. Well, I'll tell you about that maybe sometime in the very near future. Oh, you're going to be very disappointed when you hear the answer. Don't worry. Multiple investigations into the Trump campaign's contacts with Russia continue. The president's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, is scheduled to meet with Senate staff next week to discuss meetings with the Russian ambassador. On Tuesday, Attorney General Jeff Sessions will answer questions from the Senate Intelligence Committee. We want to get back to running our great country. Jobs, trade deficits, we want them to disappear fast. The president will try to seize the agenda with a Tuesday visit to a Wisconsin technical college. It's part of Workforce Development Week. And as early as Friday, he's expected to travel to Miami and announce a new Cuba policy, tightening trade and travel restrictions that were loosened by President Obama. Brooke Silva Braga for CBS News, New York. Fans are mourning the death of television's original Batman, Adam West. The actor's family says he died last night after a short battle with leukemia. West is best known for his role as Batman. The show left the air after three seasons, but West said he was pleased to have helped bring the iconic character to life. West was 88 years old. An Army staff sergeant killed in action in Afghanistan is being remembered today. Volunteers built a new playground in Amherst in honor of Billy Wilson III. News 4's Marissa Perlman talks to family and friends who say he would have loved to see this park come to light. Kim and Bill Wilson put the final screws into a sign that reads Billy Wilson Park. He would thoroughly enjoy seeing this for all these kids. Their son was killed in 2012 overseas, and by the end of the day, the 8,000 square foot playground in his honor will be complete. All thanks to the 200 plus volunteers here. It, it's emotional for us. So, um, we just love everything that they've done for us. It's kind of <laughs> surreal. It's a little surreal. 
And while the volunteers are hard at work, many carry memories of the soldier they lost. It's not just a, a park anymore. It, it means something to me, and you know, hopefully a lot of people. And you know, Billy had the Billy had the opportunity to touch a lot of people, and he, he he knows a lot of people. And you know, hopefully when we come here, we'll think of him. The playground was designed to be inclusive of all kids, including those on the autism spectrum and those in a wheelchair. Every child will be able to play on this playground. Fundraising efforts over the years have made this park possible. It's a plan that's been a long time in the making. It's been about four years we've been working on it. Town came to us and uh, minded if they uh, named the park after Billy. And we didn't even know anything about it. And we went to a board meeting and it was unanimously passed. The playground is expected to open in the last week of June after the rubber surface is applied and a safety inspection is conducted. It's nice to have something to talk about, actually see it happening. And for Kim and Bill, it's also nice to have the support of this community who have helped to make all of this happen. We just live in a, commu a great community and they've been, they've been great to us from the day we lost Billy. You know, they really have supported us and it's, I wouldn't want to live in any, anywhere else. Reporting in Amherst, Marissa Perlman, News 4. Still on the way at 6, art takes over Allentown. We'll take you behind the scenes of this one-of-a-kind festival. And some big changes are coming to Buffalo. Why leaders say it will help shine light on a community they think is often overlooked.